When you learn the rules and the vocabulary of investing and begin to build your asset column, I think you'll find that it's as fun a game as you'll have ever played. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, but have fun. Most people never win because they're more afraid of losing. And that is why I found school so silly. In school, we learn the mistakes, that mistakes are bad and we are punished for making them. everybody hope everybody's having a great start to the day so far and hopefully we can add to that great start with some reading for you rich dad poor dad we're in chapter five we've almost finished chapter five we have already read 200 pages um but we skipped the summary section uh so we haven't fully read 200 pages but it is a great book and i'm looking forward to continuing on and giving you that motivation to be able to think about your finances differently today and start doing different things because very often we'll read a book. It's very important to be able to read the book and then implement. So we'll talk about some of my ideas around what we are reading as well. So let's get into it. Here we go. Uh, Here we go. Let's see, where did we leave off? This is where we left off. Okay. In the final chapter of this book, I offer 10 steps that I followed on the road to my financial freedom. But always remember to have fun. And it's very, very true. You always have to have fun. If it's not fun, then you're going to work hard against yourself to be able to uh, do what you need to do. When you learn the rules and the vocabulary of investing and begin to build your asset column, I think you'll find that it's as fun a game as you'll have ever played. Sometimes you win and sometimes you learn, but have fun. Most people never win because they're more afraid of losing. And that is why I found school so silly. In school, we learn the mistakes, that mistakes are bad, and we are punished for making them. Yet if you look at the way humans are designed to learn, we learn by making mistakes. We learn to walk by falling down. If we never fell down, we would never walk. The same is true for learning to ride a bike. I still have scars on my knees, but today I can ride a bike without thinking. The same is true for getting rich. Unfortunately, the main reason for most people, the the main reason most people are not rich is because they are terrified of losers. Winning and not afraid of losing, but losers are. Failure is part of the process of success. People who avoid failure also avoid success. At the last paragraph that we finished on yesterday and I talked about the fact that babies uh, crawl because they don't know how to walk yet and then they will start doing their best to start walking and they will fall over and they don't then say oh I can't walk I'll never be able to walk this walking thing is not for me Um, you don't see any adults who are still crawling because they gave up and never started walking Eventually, we all learn from those mistakes and get better. And that is how we learn to walk. And that is why we walk. I look at money much like my game of tennis. I play hard, make mistakes, correct, make more mistakes, correct, and get better. If I lose the game, I reach across the net, shake my opponent's hand, smile, and say, see you next Saturday. There are two kinds of investors. The first and most common type is a person who buys a packaged investment. They call a retail outlet, such as a real estate company, a stockbroker, or a financial planner, and they buy something. Could be a mutual fund, an REIT, a real estate investment trust, a stock or a bond. It is a clean and simple way of investing. An analogy would be a shopper who goes to a computer store and buys a computer right off the shelf. The second type is an investor who creates investment. This investor usually assembles a deal in the same way a person who buys components builds a computer. I do not know the first thing about putting components of a computer together, but I do know how to put pieces of opportunities together or know people who know how. And that is a key thing. So you want to be as much as possible in control of what you are doing. It's very easy to buy a mutual fund, but you're not the one who's actually managing that mutual fund. It's somebody else who is picking those stocks. So you're relying on their expertise and their knowledge. When it comes to creating and putting together your own mutual fund by picking your own stocks, for example, or if you are doing similar to real estate, the more control you have, the better it is. And you don't have to be the person who is the expert. 
you can use other people who are already doing it. You can use other people who have the skills and the knowledge that they can pass on to you in order to be able to have more control. It is this second type of investor who is the more professional investor. Sometimes it may take years for all the pieces to come together, and that is very true. Um, you're going to make mistakes. You might not have met the right people yet. Um, most overnight successes do not happen overnight. Um, it might take you years to be able to come up with the right strategies to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Obviously, the earlier you start, the better it is. But it doesn't stop you from getting started. And we never know how long we're going to live for. And we need to be grateful for every day that we are alive. So we need to get started. And hopefully there are many, many more years for us to be able to still achieve great things. It doesn't matter when you start. It just matters that you start. And sometimes they never do. It's the second type of investor that my rich dad encouraged me to be. It is important to learn how to put the pieces together because that is where the huge wins reside. And sometimes some huge losses if the tiger goes against you. If you want to be the second type of investor, you need to develop three main skills. One, find an opportunity that everybody else missed. You see with your mind what others miss with their eyes. For example, a friend brought this, brought this rundown old house. It was spooky to look at. Everybody wondered why he bought it. What he saw that we did not was that the house came with four extra empty lots. He discovered that after going to the title company, after buying the house, he tore the house down and sold the five lots to a builder for three times what he paid for the entire package. He made $75,000 for two months of work. It's not a lot of money, but it sure beats minimum wage, and it's not technically difficult. Two, they need to raise money. The average person goes to the bank. The second type of investor needs to know how to raise capital, and that there are many ways that don't require a bank. To get started, I learned how to buy houses without a bank. It was the learned skill of raising money more than the houses themselves that was priceless. All too often I hear people say, the bank won't lend me money, or I don't have the money to buy it. If you want to be a type 2 investor, you need to learn how to do that which stops most people. In other words, a majority of people let their lack of money stop them from making a deal. If you can avoid that obstacle, you will be millions ahead of those who didn't learn those skills. There have been many times I've bought a house, stock, or an apartment building without a penny in the bank. I once bought an apartment house for $1.2 million. I did what is called tying it up with a written contract between seller and buyer. I then raised the $100,000 deposit, which bought me 90 days to raise the rest of the money. Why did I do it? Simply because I knew it was worth $2 million. I never raised the money. Instead, the person who put up the $100,000 gave me $50,000 for finding the deal, took over my position, and I walked away. Total working time, three days. Again, it's what you know more than what you buy. Investing is not buying. It's more a case of knowing. And number three, organize smart people. Intelligent people are those who work with or hire a person who is more intelligent than they are. When you need advice, make sure you choose your advisor wisely. And you might need to cycle through a few. You might be lucky and find the right one immediately. Get referrals if you can from people who have gotten great results from somebody. That is the kind of person that you want to work with. There's a lot to learn, but the rewards can be astronomical. If you do not want to learn those skills, then being a type one investor is highly recommended. It is what you know that is your greatest wealth. It is what you do not know that is your greatest risk. There is always risk. So learn to manage risk instead of avoiding it. And that was chapter five. So chapter five, very much about learning the skills, finding places to learn the skills in order to be able to do things in a different way. So everybody can go to the stock market and buy a stock. Everybody can purchase certain things. There's a difference between what they call wholesale and retail investing. Retail investing is where you go out and you do what everybody else is doing, which is you buy a property at the market price, 
you have a feeling that the price will go up over time, or you know that there's going to be a very good rental income from that property, but you are buying at the market price. So if the market goes down, then you are losing money on that deal in the short term, and hopefully it will come back up at some point. But if you are paying a mortgage, it makes it extremely difficult to be able to pay the mortgage. You can't refinance because the price has gone down. You can't sell if you need to in an emergency because the price is lower than the market value that you paid for it at that point in time. And then there is wholesale investing where you have a look at a property that is already under market value. So it could be uh, a deceased estate that the bank wants to get rid of very quickly and is happy to sell for under market value because they'd rather sell it today than have to wait a month for it to go onto the open market. There are people who default on their mortgages who also end up um, repossessed by the bank and also sell at under market value. So what we are wanting to do is we want to learn as many strategies as possible. And two nights ago at Cashflow, we had a gentleman come and he had done some Forex, he'd done some stock trading, he'd done some real estate, he'd done all of these different things, cryptocurrency now as well. And so the more things you do, the more you learn, the more strategies you know, the more you can react to what the market is doing. Robert Kiyosaki gave a perfect example of the Phoenix market um, that he was in at a certain point in time when the economy was not doing so well. And because the economy wasn't doing well, you could get properties at a very good price. And so he used that in order to be able to then buy properties for a while until the economy started to go better. And then when there were no, well, when it was more challenging to find the right deals, he moved on to a different place where things were not looking as good as they now were in Phoenix. So it is always about learning as much as possible, understanding how these deals are put together. It's also the creativity and being able to use and understand and learn to be able to be more creative. And creativity is really drummed out of us um, from a young age. So I'm a very big fan of a gentleman who's unfortunately now died, Tony Buzan, who taught memory. And Tony would talk about the fact that when we are babies, we have this very, very high level of creativity. And then our parents will tell us that we have to do certain things. And it stops us from being as creative as we want to. So watch out for the fire, watch out for this, watch out for that. They tell us that we need to be very careful. And it starts to impede on our creativity a little bit because we want to play with those matches. We want to play with that saucepan on the, on the stove. We want to touch everything. We want to do everything. Then when we go to school, all of a sudden we have to color in between the lines. And so our creativity of creating our coloring the way we want to is reduced. Then we go to primary school and we have to uh, use a black and blue pen. And we're not allowed to use colored pens and pencils as much anymore. And then when we go to high school, we're really not allowed to color the pages or do this. We have to draw a margin. It has to be two centimeters or one centimeter or however many centimeters it is. And all of these rules get placed on us. So by the time we become an adult, our creativity level has gone from 100% to, if we are lucky, 20% or maybe even less than 20%. And it's that creativity that we can nurture and get back. And we need to be able to get that creativity back because that creativity is what allows us to be able to look at things and figure out how we can get around the challenges of investing, how we can create really interesting deals that are going to work better than we thought they would. So for example, at one point, I had the ability to be able to sell some apartments in this new building that they were going to build in Wollongong. And rather than wanting to be able to earn a commission and receiving money for the units that I was selling inside that building, I had actually requested whether I'd be able to get two apartments in exchange. So I would still need to take out a mortgage, but I was able to get two properties of which one I'd be able to rent out. And if I wanted to go and live down in Wollongong, I'd be able to live in the second one. Now, unfortunately, the building plan never went ahead. So the building was never built. I think it's still a vacant piece of land. I'd need to have a, a look at that. Some deals, they work, some they don't. And that is completely fine. You just need to keep looking for more deals. If you only look at one and it doesn't work, well, 
not everything works and that's completely fine. But the idea is that you can start to nurture that creativity and that creativity is what gets you asking people questions. It's what gets you to experiment with different things. It gets you to think about what you enjoy doing. It gets you to have a look at a deal and see if there is a way to reduce the down payment. It allows you to then be able to see if you can value add to the property in order to be able to get a higher rental income back. So let's say, for example, that it's an area with single person houses that um, are mainly for uh, young professionals who are still single. But now the area is starting to change and improve and a lot of families are starting to move in. So now it becomes possible for me to create a backyard play area for the children and people might be willing to pay a little bit more rent because there is this custom design um, play area for children in the backyard. And so that creativity allows you to be able to Take a deal from meh to wow. And that is where the money is made. Mladen's also just shared everybody has different ways of learning. So if you want to color your book and that helps you, then absolutely do it. And the more you can practice these things, this is why I love seeing adult coloring books and different other things that are now allowing us to re-embrace our creativity because that is what separates very often the people who create deals that are so-so that will get you a return but nothing spectacular and the people who create spectacular results that creativity also gives you more of that courage to be able to take a slightly more risky approach to a deal perhaps so there are and i'm going to fly in the room as you can tell and so Embrace that creativity as much as you can. That has been the reading for today with quite a lot of commentary at the end, which has been really good. We've just finished chapter five, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm enjoying and I hope you are too. If you have missed any of those chapters that I've read, if you'd like to read the rest of the book and hear my commentary as well, you can go to my YouTube page, which is the Passive Cash Flow Club on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe because we also have some other videos coming up very soon. One of which um, my VA just told me is missing a portion of that video that she is editing for me. So we'll get onto that today. Uh, so the Passive Cash Flow Club, make sure you subscribe and you can uh, watch more. You can also um, listen to the book that we read previous to this, which is called um, The Art of Thinking Clearly, which will help you to think more clearly and avoid um, challenges in life as well and make better decisions. And Mladen also asked, are you reading the updated version or the um, original book? So I'm actually reading the updated version. So this one's with updates for today's world and new nine new study sec session sections, um, but I've decided to leave those ones out um, so that people are still encouraged to go out and buy the book, especially the new version, which is really good. And then finally, if you would like to get in touch, if you'd like to learn to play Robert Kiyosaki's board game Cashflow, which is the natural extension of reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, then feel free to get in touch because I run a cash flow club. We also have an online version that Mladen, who's on the Zoom with me and who has been leaving some comments, uh, created together with me. He's done all of the technical creation and uh, we've both come up with some ideas for how to make it more realistic so that you can use it as a tool. It's like a, a real life simulator. So you can test different strategies. You can understand how the taxation works and you can actually... Um, figure out how to start being more creative around investing. And so if you want to take those lessons from this chapter and start implementing them, then that's a great place to do it. So you can find me on Instagram. You can follow what I post, but you can also get in touch with me through the direct message. And once you do that, I'll get my VA to send you information about cash flow. And you can also um, get in touch and ask some questions or have a discussion on some of the things that we've been reading, for example. So feel free to reach out at business underscore team underscore six underscore official. So business underscore team underscore six underscore official. I'm looking forward to seeing you all there. Have an amazing day today. Thank you so much for joining. And I hope you get a lot from reading Rich Dad Poor Dad and the commentary that I add. And go out and create some amazing things for yourself because 
every single one of you is capable of achieving great things. And I'll see you tomorrow, Sydney time, 8 a.m. Oh, oh, oh.